to K. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then I haven't done this in years. I think I just push live. Oh, let me make you the host. Do you want me to make you the host? Ashley, do you need any? You're moderating, like we're yeah. just jumping. I am, um, yeah. Okay. And All right. This will be a quick one. <laughs> I'll just follow your leads, okay? Perfect. Yeah, when you go live, let me know so that I can share it. All right. It says, here we go. Do we want a particular description? Um, you could put uh, the creator in you if you want. Okay. Creator in you panel chat, maybe? Yeah. Okay. Go live. Great. Okay, we'll give it just a second. Okay. I might have to come back to sharing it. I don't see it yet on your Facebook page. You did accept my, oh, did you accept my friendship on Facebook? No, but I'll do that right now. I see us live. Welcome everyone. We will be starting in just a few moments. Um, we're very excited to have this conversation today, the creator and you panel chat. And we're just getting our technology sorted. Okay, let's see here. Did you share it to your page, Ashley? I'm about to, I'm just gonna tag us. Okay. You both are so good. It's Megan Emily, is that correct? Yes, Megan Emily. Perfect. I'm just gonna refresh here and see. And then we can, it's always a little moment at the beginning. <laughs> the initiatory moment, right? Yeah. We are good. I've shared Oh, it. good. There we are. I'm sharing too. Okay. Share to feed. Very good. <gasps> all righty. So I think that we are all live. We are all queued up on Zoom. We're all queued up on Facebook. Um, thank you for anyone who's who's watching. Uh, we we made it. We made it uh, to the to the zone, the internet zone. Um, we had a little glitch in the time zone. So for these panel chats that uh, Kay has been gathering individuals from all over the country. So we we're always um, working within different time zones. And I think we uh, got a few of our panel members got a little confused about the correct time. So we have a short or we have a smaller panel than usual, but I think it'll be really fun because we'll get to go into depth a little bit more uh, than when we're sharing the platform with a handful more of our friends. Um, so, you know, let's feel free to, to, deep dive into this, if you will. Um, so tonight uh, on the panel, it's myself. I'm going to be leading a discussion on our theme, which is the creator in you. We get to discuss the wonderful topic of creativity, creators, creation. Um, and uh, joining me tonight is Ashley and Jenny. So in a moment, uh, I'll uh, have you uh, introduce yourself in a little bit more depth, but um, I just wanted to to share a little bit of what's been going on um, in my day as we we lead uh, as we land here in this panel chat. Uh, creation has just been coming at me from every direction for the last like three or four days. So my birthday was on Tuesday, and part of me wonders like, did Kay like link me in this discussion at this time because it's Aries season? I'm on fire um, during Aries season. I almost always become my most creative in the year. Um, and I just I just keep laughing out loud, like just just laughing, like I can't believe creativity is coming up again. Um, so I'm really honored to bring this uh, this topic to the table. And uh, through the months, we've had really uh, wonderful individuals uh, join us. And I think one of my favorite parts of these panel discussions is just having an opportunity to listen to people. Uh, when you involve technology, there's some 
pros, there's some cons. And I think one of the pros is I actually end up listening to people more because I'm like watching you. <laughs> um, and so um, this is this is the topic today, creation, the creator in you. And so um, <clears throat> Jenny, I'm going to ask you uh, to, to answer the, the first question, a little bit of an icebreaker here. It seems simple, not quite. Um, but I'm going to ask you a twofold question. One would be to define creation. Um, and as you define creation, also let us know what you've been working on, where 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 you're creating right now, what you're creating, where you're creating from. <laughs> Jenny. Thank you, Megan. Thank you so much. And um, when I had a glimpse that that might be the question that you would ask me, I thought, oh, yeah, start small here. <laughs> like, what is <laughs> What is creation, right? What does it mean? And one of the things serendipitously that I've been dancing with is how it is that I spent most of my life feeling more comfortable with being a consumer rather than a creator, right? So consuming things, food, belongings, um, other people's teachings, you know, um, which is beautiful and there's a place for that, but really different to be the creator of. And so for me, being a creator is our divine nature, uh, my divine nature, and that we are here to create. We're, we're not necessarily here to consume. We can do that as well, but um, our nature is to create. So that's how I feel into that question. And then where I have been creating from in the last year and a half, I've made this real commitment to create from a place of pleasure because most of my creation has been from what I think of as like the boot on the back of my neck, like pushing anxiety, like hurry, lack consciousness, scarcity, like I have to do it. Um, the sort of good girl energy in me to like do it and do it right and like hop to. And again, there's nothing wrong with that, but that season for me, at least right now has closed. And so creating from a place of what feels really delicious in me, living more in my back body and allowing inspiration to invite me forward rather than um, having desperation, right? <laughs> Push me um, forward. So yeah, so I've been creating from a place of pleasure, which has created things that I never would have imagined, right? Because I normally don't hang out in pleasure prior to the last 18 months or so. I love that. I, it's an unexpected, um, it's unexpected to hear that creating from a place of pleasure. We don't, I mean, I think even not to go down a rabbit hole, but even for women to use the word pleasure <laughs> can automatically feel erotic or something. We yes. It's been taken from us in some I way. Oh, it has. And it's so fun. It's not funny. It's it. I am gobsmacked when I talk about pleasure, which I do a lot. And yeah. immediately what women think I'm talking about masturbating or having sex <laughs> or sensually touching yourself when pleasure is looking out my window at the Cardinals, right? Yeah. Pleasure is the chair that I'm sitting in. Pleasure is being in conversation with you having a glass that I love to hold with warm tea in it. There's so many places of pleasure and pleasure is found when I'm safe in my body, right? Safety always comes before pleasure. And because I think many of us have swallowed the programming of um, anxiety and fear and worry, right? Then it's hard to have pleasure because it's like, no, but I have to do this, but I have to do that, right? So pleasure is like everyday pleasure, right? And like how you touch your hair, that's pleasurable. Yeah, very, very, very creative. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Ashley, same question. Can you tell us what creation is uh, and, and how creation is manifesting in your life right now? Thank you, Megan. Creativity. And Jenny, I love your answer and I align very much with that. And when I was considering um, creation before we got onto this call, I was actually thinking about um, the, the term that kept coming to my mind is like creation is our birthright. It is my birthright. And um, when I think of creation, I think of conception, um, not to get too far down the rabbit hole of body, but 
but there is like a conceiving part that should be driven by pleasure because it is our birthright and it is a part of the process. And there is the transformative space that creation exists in regards to like expansion and contraction and the things that kind of live in that natural rhythm of life, just like breath. Um, but for me, it really does come from it is a birthright. It's innate. It's innate as human beings to desire creativity. And, and those things can exist in, um, I don't know, like angel wings and crystals. It can exist in how we dress ourselves for the day. It can exist in how we've created our home environment. Like it can exist in what may seem like a, a mundane experience, but is actually amplifying like a reality that is creative in its, I think in its, its natural way. I think that there's been a separation uh, that has happened over time due to if you want to call it programming, like there's different things that have kind of separated us, but I, I really love that you brought up the pleasure dynamic, Jenny, because I 100% agree with that. Mm -hmm. And the second question is what, I, what am I creating now? Um, yeah. I'm, I'm working on a code of, a code of ethics. Um, uh, it's, it's, I'm, I get so shy about it. Um, I'm working on a foundational curriculum for light workers that grounds us into ethical practices. So that way our creativity can be boundless when we're sort of in a, in a comforting, almost womb like space. So wow. about that. <laughs> Amazing. I love it. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, creativity. I, 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 def, I, I would, you know, when, when you're the panel, um, host, you look up the definition, right? And the, the definition, the word or the phrase that was quite simply, you know, um, repeated was bringing something, something into existence. And so it, it was really, you know, I love when definitions hit you as so powerful <laughs> when, I've known this definition probably my whole life, right? But I've never really thought about it. And that's what's so profound about reflection, right? And so I was reflecting on this, just bringing into existence. This is birth over and over again. Every every breath technically is a creation. And those of us who, who engage in breath work intentionally, we know that that's part of what gets you through a meditative breath work for an hour is that you get to rebirth it every single breath. It's a new opportunity to bring something into existence. And so even in breath work, you're, you're creating, but um, uh, creation uh, for me, when I was thinking of it on a more personal level, like what's going on with me when I'm being creative, right? When I'm creating something, I'm almost always like bringing an emotion or a thought or, I'm almost always bringing an emotion or a thought into existence. It's like, oh, I have this idea or I have this feeling and then it, it needs to go somewhere. It's very much got emotion to it, right? Uh, creation as well. So it's bringing something into existence for me almost always through some sort of emotion or or thought pattern, I suppose. Um, and right now uh, I'm working on... Uh, I'm I'm done publishing or I'm done with the publication. I'm just waiting for it to be printed. And so part B, I've created the the creation. I just need to put a business, you know, uh, aspect to it. And we'll get into some of that. But yes, like even like doing your job can is an act of creation. And if you forget that, how mundane the job can be. And if you forget that things that are mundane themselves are also creation you know, you can get lost and, and not experience the pleasure and joy of every single moment, technically being a moment of, of creativity. Um, so I'm working quite literally on, on my business right now. Um, but also just always writing music and, um, looking for more ways to co-create, uh, with my friends and, and bringing experiences to people that are life affirming, you know, this is, this is the main work is getting people to engage in life affirming practices. So 
that's what I'm I'm creating right now. Um, Ashley, what um, in what forms do we see creation manifest? I mean, we know, you know sometimes we only think the the painting is being creative, right? We you know do we get stuck in the art bubble only? But how do we manifest creation? In what forms do oh. does the created manifest? It's a big question. <laughs> Yeah, to me, it's so vast. Um, so I think that our society highlights the creations like art and um, performance and, and, and those are beautiful. But getting back to the conversation we were having about the, the, mun the mundane, so to speak, mm -hmm. um, one of the practices that I have is finding ceremony in every day. And to me, the ceremony is the creativity. It is the creative process. How can I bring creativity to washing dishes? How can I bring creativity to taking care of my furry loved ones, my cats? You know, it, 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 there are so many opportunities in every day to, to get creative and allow for that creative process to exist. And it's the tiny celebrations that I think have the most impact. Um, when it comes to creativity. So those of you that might be listening um, that have moments of uh, feeling lack when it comes to creativity, sometimes the best thing to do is to find those creative sparks within your everyday, um, change the pattern, you know, do something different, maybe roll off the other side of the bed. That could be your creative notion for the day. Um, so I think, you're correct. I do think that we tend to highlight specific types of creativity mm -hmm. and we tend to honor that. Um, and I think there's a lot connected to that, but, but my approach and encouragement overall is to, is to find those sparks of genius within your everyday. Um, so dishes, for example, I had the most powerful awareness because I was playing with a spoon in the water. I was I was washing a spoon and I just twisted the spoon in such a way that the water splashed all over the basin and a little bit on me. And it made me laugh, but it also made me think of the power of unity consciousness and how just twisting my awareness in one tiny direction can cause a massive splash in the in the world. And it was from an everyday, I do it every day I wash the dishes. Yeah. So I um, just wanted to share that. I love that. You know, it's funny you mentioned the dishes. Um, you, Thich Nhat Hanh had many, 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 many books. Um, uh, w the one I'm referring to is Peace is Every Step. I'm 99% sure that's the title. Peace is Every Step. And in that, the, the notion is in the title, every step. And, and we know this from literally like walking meditations you can find, but it it was this idea that when you're doing the dishes, that could be a meditation. When you are brushing your hair, this could be a meditation. Certainly when you're talking to someone, that can be a meditation. And, and he, while he's using the word meditation, really a, another way of looking at it is, can you be in that sort of meditative state of mind, that approach of being radically present in every step, whether it's the dishes or painting or writing the next, you know, top 10 hit <laughs> musically, it's, they, they should all have the same level of, of impact almost on your life creatively, if you're radically present with it. So it just reminded me how the dishes are, are um, a very Buddhist example. <laughs> I hope that's the title of your next book, Megan. <laughs> <laughs> Radical presence. <laughs> Radical presence, exactly. Um, okay, Jenny, um, this one is, a, 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 again, it's kind of a bigger question, but who has access to creation? And I asked this question with a couple of, you know, additional questions. That's my style. It's rarely just one, but who has access to creation? Meaning do animals have access to creation? Do non-humans do beings from other dimensions, do those beings have an impact in our dimension? So who has access? Is I that love a your small little bite-sized <laughs> Facebook panel chat questions. <laughs> a 
I'm like, oh yeah, everyone. And then you're like, but every like rocks and trees. Yeah, and like, we know the answer. Right? All of it. We know the answer. We want to understand we know it. the answer. <laughs> All of it, I mean, in this present moment, which could change, right? And how I understand the world or orient, we're all creation, we're all divinity, and that is absolutely everything. And so that means that creation is always alive and how it is that we engage in it, right? With the trees or the rocks or the, you know, non-human world, whatever that might be. But I think it's all of us. Yeah. And yeah. all of the non-us too, <laughs> right? And what about in the the, the most like, like a, a very limit, an, an example where someone might be very limited, like being a human being, being, being in prison, existing in prison, right? Can you speak to that? Like, you know, what about people who have less access to freedom and pleasure? Sure, sure. <laughs> and the and it, right, right. I think very much to what Ashley said, that creativity is happening all the time. And when we, when I usually talk about creativity, or I think culturally, we think about it as like something that's intentional and positive. Yeah. And I think of creativity as like everything, right? And so I can be creating something unconsciously that's harmful, right? When I encounter a neighbor and I, you know, in my world, the women who I mentor, we've coined the term word squirting. <laughs> when you word squirt, oh. you're like emotional bleh at something. Yes. You spew and you just plant some seeds of fear, anxiety, or judgment, and then walk away. That's an act of creation, right? And there's something is left in one's wake behind mm -hmm. them. And I think part of the, the practice and, um, mystery school or the different kinds of spiritual mastery that some of us engage in is learning to become very aware that every signal I believe I put off is an act of creation. And so what am I creating, even as I'm sitting here with you both, with my words, with my thoughts, right? And not in a perfectionistic way or being hard on myself, but you know, we are so powerful. And so many women are like, we're so powerful. And I'm like, yeah, know how powerful you are and be responsible for that power, yeah. right? Because it's like having a loaded gun and just waving it around. It's like, whoa, whoa, like your mouth, your eyes, your movements, your body, your beliefs, everything is an act of creation, whether we intend it or not. Whether we intend it or not. Who um who inspires you to create? I know that you are working with women, you're working with clients, you're working with groups on retreats, yeah. and you're often in a position where you're inspiring others probably to be creative. Who inspires you? Or do you have an example of something that just completely changed you because of a creation oh, you were exposed to? That's um, you know, I think I'm most inspired by everyday people who I encounter, who are, um, you know, women who I would say are colleagues and friends of mine who are stepping out and doing their own retreats, who are leaving jobs or choosing different, you know, relationships or, you know, that they're listening more and more to themselves because I believe how I'm orienting to myself right now is that the more me I can be authentically me rather than me trying to be Megan or trying to be Ashley or trying to be a spiritual guru or teacher or something else, the more me I can be, the more unique creation I can bring into the world. Like my little fractal is going to have my brand on it, you know, my signal. And mm -hmm. so when I see other women doing that in the world where I see them being so uniquely them because they are not like anybody I know. That thrills me. And it feels like it gives me permission to be me and to color outside of my lines, right? Mm -hmm. And so I've been partnering a lot lately with women like that who inspire me. And I just leave those interactions feeling so tickled and feeling like I have more permission to create um, in a way that feels very wild and new and fresh, which just gets me up in the morning for sure. Yeah. 
I love that. I, I and and you bring this up. It's almost like when when you're a teacher or a leader, or you're ever in a position where you're sort of expressing that which you created. Um, what the the irony is that really what ends up happening is is your students, your clients, the, the those you're 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 gathering, um, they end up being the ones that inspire you <laughs> in your creation. It's it, that's the the lovely relationship of a leader or a teacher um, who's not um, fallen prey to to like a power, uh, abuse of power, who's truly leading, right? Your students always end up being the inspiration even more than some world, you know, world-class role model. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, great segue uh, into co-creation. Um, and so, you know, what does uh, Ashley, this is for you. I would love to hear your thoughts on co-creation, what it looks like, um, how it's different from one person just sitting around <laughs> creating when you're co-creating, because this is really like, like really gained some speed here in the last decade that not only this phrase, I, I never heard this phrase 15 years ago, and now we are all out there co-creating. What is co-creation? What does this mean? What is it doing for our communities? Yes, that I, I could talk for a very long time about this. Um, let me gather the many thoughts into a moment. Um, okay. So for me, co-creation, I think just like, uh, just like Jenny was sharing, I think that there is like different ways to do it. There, there is the kind of co-creation where you're learning something about power dynamics and then there are co-creations that there's interdependence and there's reciprocity and there's energy that's like pulling you forward in a co-creative experience. And I would say in general, creation is co-creative because when something is being birthed into the world, um, uh, whether by thought or action or art or whatever it is, it's it is, it has its own unique blueprint that is going to be received by other in some way. And so even if you are teaching, there is a co-creative experience that's actually in that because there was an invitation and there was an acceptance, which means different individuals, different energies agreed to the experience and, and here we are in a co-creative uh, environment. And, um, and I think being really honest about those power dynamics, because, um, you know, especially when, when um, birthing, right, the, the creative process has an emotion to it. Like there's an emotional element that exists mm -hmm. and, um, and the emotions are kind of informing us of like, you know, unfortunately we do live in a, a dualistic world where it's like we can pull into the shadow or we can kind of pull into the light. And, um, and I think being really honest about that allows for the co-creative process to continue to move into that, into that lighter realm. So I may have gotten sidetracked, but I'm hoping that that answered your question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, we can speak about co-creation in, in numerous directions. Um, you know, for me, you know, my experience and kind of uh, uh, bringing this into to my mainstream dialogue, talking about this with others, uh, it, it it definitely came th through my experiences uh, two twofold. One is a yoga instructor in my yoga world, and then also in like my sisterhood community, right? And so we, I have a very strong sisterhood community that doesn't necessarily have like a common spiritual thread through it, other than maybe being, um, uh, you know, very seasonal, like celebrating seasons and whatnot. So there, but the sister group, one of, um, the, the, you know, uh, principles, the guiding principles has always been to introduce, you know, your friends to your friends. If somebody needs help, you know, with their Shopify account, connect them. If somebody needs, you know, uh, has all these mason jars they're getting rid of and another person uses mason jars to make bamboo plants or whatever, to constantly network. This is the word that I'm finding is this, this co-creation has also 
um, comes into this networking. It's not necessarily getting together, you know, 15 people and, and sewing a quilt together, like literally a co-creation, but it comes in this, this other form of networking one another. I mean, look at us here right now. This is exactly what we're doing because we've been networked by, by Kay. She's brought us together. Um, were you going to say something? Yeah. I do. I, I love that you're saying that because I think that that interconnectedness is critical because the word that was coming to mind when you were sharing is wholeness. We're, we're, we're looking for wholeness. And a lot of times the way that I define it is each one of us is a kaleidoscope of that unity consciousness. And we're each bringing like a very unique color into that interconnectedness. And so what you're speaking to, to me is just a perfect example of a healthy version of, of co-creation. Yeah. Yeah. We had a run in the, in the yoga world where there were just gurus and gurus and gurus. And while a guru is wonderful in, in, in many ways, when they are tried and true in that position, um, there's there's so much to be gained, but through through hundreds of years, we're talking even thousands. That's the tradition of yoga: is you have a guru and then you have students. Um, and through not only evolution, just in general, evolution of culture, evolution of science, evolution of spirituality, evolution of um, all the paradigms, all the things, it's changed a little bit. But also because there's we're not very quiet about abuse of power like we once were. There's a a, a, a big a, a willingness to talk about it. And so I think one of the resolutions when we go, well, what do we do without a guru? Well, we do it ourselves as a group, as a team, we co-create. Um, and, and I've loved this because now we've seen so much empowerment come into the lives of individuals we would have never seen. Like, you know, feel empowered and, and to create um, in their own right. So would you, uh, Jenny, like to share anything about co-creation or? I love this conversation just about the net weaving together. Like we're all these little spiders, these women, right? And we're like, oh, I have this, I'm gonna share that here. And then there's that thread, right? That silk between us. And then we share with someone else. And when we have this rich web, not only are we being of service to another, which I believe is our nature, right? As humans, but I think especially as women, like we really want to be of service to each other and lift each other up and be in relationship. We also then have a net, right? So now I'm tethered in with my sisters, with my community. So then I feel safe. And when I feel safe and held, I can have pleasure, right? And so many people, you know, I am trained as a, clinician as a therapist and depression is like hugely on the rise and why because so many people no longer feel like they have a net right no longer feel like they're woven in to a fabric so that they feel safe yeah. uh, if something happens and so I I just think that it's it's our future as women to do more of this net weaving together right um with one another so that we can each feel held and share our resources you yeah. know because i i do really believe that when we're safe and nourished right which is just another word for pleasure being nourished mm -hmm. then i by default want to give want to be of service want to contribute want to help but when i'm not safe and i'm not nourished then i start gripping and and clenching, right? Yeah. And hoarding whatever emotionally or physically, whatever's going on. So I think the net is really where it's at for us. Yeah. Thank you. One of uh one of us, <laughs> we we did we brought up that creativity isn't always positive. It's not always beautiful. We can create things that are negative, we can create things that are dark, we can create um even evil forces, right, etc. cetera. Um, that said, um, you know, I'm, uh, I'm curious, like what is, does, does creation have a feeling? I talked about how feelings provoke creation for me, um, but does creation, even knowing that sometimes what we're creating could be viewed as negative, could be viewed as positive, is there a feeling in creation? Is there a feeling in the moment? And you know, I'll, I can speak to it 
but I'd like to hear you. <laughs> um, and, and we'll ask Jenny and Ashley this question. So Jenny, why don't you keep going? But is there, is there a feeling to creativity? Megan, where do you come up with these questions, lady? <laughs> my goodness. Um, Notice I'm like, move, like talking from right, my heart like, the whole yes. time. I'm like, the heart. There's the heart. a feeling to it. <laughs> <laughs> and and I think there cannot be a feeling. I can be so unaware of what I'm creating, right? I think about a, a conversation I had with a colleague the other day where she remembered me saying something that I didn't remember saying. And I created something in her that I did not have acknowledged, you know, and <laughs> we had wires crossed and I created something. So I had no feeling there because I didn't even know that there was creation happening. Right. And so I, I think it's the spectrum and then there can be the feeling of creation. Um, I recently created this pleasure quiz and I felt so much pleasure in creating it with my team and like the questions and wanting to make it feel like an experience. So that creation experience felt very effervescent in my body and a lot of the anticipation and excitement and also the um, uncertainty of how it would be received, right? Like all of it was happening. So for me, I feel like it's the spectrum from nothing because I have no idea to, you know, the joy. And then the, the feeling of if I create something, you know, like I start driving off the road that I'm creating an accident and the terror in that, right. And everything in between. Yeah. It becomes complex when we've already acknowledged that everything is <laughs> creation, <laughs> all of it, all the things. <laughs> what I wanna, yeah. What I want to add to the conversation is something that you highlighted Megan, which was about empowerment and we had done a panel chat talk a few months ago about empowerment, which for me felt like it's a remembering that you have power, right? So when we talked about a previous golden age where um, spiritual leaders were really what we leaned into, we were giving our power to a, a core individual to, to trust and guide us. And that served a purpose. And what we're seeing now in the collective is more of an empowerment, a remembering that the power actually is within us and that we have the ability to create um, whatever present moment or reality that we're, that we're looking for. And so um, I 100% agree with what Jenny is saying. It took me a moment because I really needed to think about feeling and creation, but I do think it runs it runs the the gamut in regards to nothing and everything, just like the definition creation is, right? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Thank you. Hmm. So, so I have a, like a comment and then it might come back to something you said, Jenny, I want to understand when, so, okay. I'm, I don't know how to put all these thoughts in, into one. So one when I talk about a feeling of creation, for me, when I like, like, let's say I'm writing a song, something that we could easily, you know, label as creative, right? It, it's, it's like, I'm singing it to someone, it's automatically already an act of co-creation. I'm rarely writing a song to myself. It's always like, fueled by someone else. So I'm already co-creating, even though this person isn't here, like the classic big breakup song. I am writing that to the person who broke up with me. I'm singing it to them. They're in this co-creative moment. They might not even know it, um, but they're inspiring it. Right. So a lot of things coming in here. Um, but then there's like the, the solution based feeling like we experienced this so much during COVID where all of a sudden everything shut down and we had to creatively come up with ways and solutions to still work, to see one another, to give and receive love. You know, like we were so creative to be quite honest, even though that creativity, the feeling might have been one of uh, feeling unsafe, actually, ironically, or scared or um, you know, confused, panicked. <laughs> These were, were fueling things. Um, but so what I'm coming back to now, this, this sort of feeling is something you said earlier, Jenny, about front body and back body, that you've been working a lot with the back body. And I'm wondering if 
that is a co-creative sort of space because in the yogic system, the front body is the self, the ego, it's the yeah. east side, the back body is the west side, it's the collective, it's the universal. Yeah. Um, it's it's where I can be scared because I'm not certain what's behind yeah. me, what all these oh, folks interesting. Are universal. So I'm just curious if that's part of why yeah. you're talking about the back body. Yeah, well, part of um in some of my somatic work. I experience the front body as that feeling when you sit at your computer and you're like, I need to, I need to do that email. I need to. So it's this put pulling yourself um, or, or feeling pushed for me as uh, when I started le really learning about my front body, I started realizing that I lived in my front body. I was constantly chasing like, oh, I have to do this. Let me just do this real quick. Let me just run to the bathroom. Let me just hurry and do this, right? And even my languaging was all like very rushing and quick, right? And this, um, what I felt like was a, a non-pleasurable space of like, yeah. oh, urgency. Whereas my back body, so part of my practice was when I was noticing all of this urgency that I was doing while I was, you know, managing some anxiety in my own self and running my business and all the things that I do, I started practicing lying on my back on my office floor, like grounding through my back body or out on the earth and taking some breaths and coming mm -hmm. into a state of safety yeah. and breath and then choosing from that place, right? And so again, that inspired action from a place of being held rather than what felt to me almost sometimes like a little girl like an eight-year-old like mom's gonna get mad I have to do this really fast you know like that urgency <laughs> right yeah. and so just playing with that in my body um because our bodies are such teachers right as you both yeah. well know noticing where for me it was located so my front body for me has been a lot of urgency yeah. Um, and so responding from back body more and then noticing the quality of that because there's creation and co-creation in both. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Very interesting. Very interesting. Oh, well, we're, we're kind of coming to our time here. Um, I'll, I'll just close it with a doozy. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is going to create some streams of consciousness here in, in terms of your uh, response, but the question I wrote specifically is, is there a distinction, a distinction between what is created by humans and what is created by the absolute? And that's a really big question. Um, so I'm curious, I don't know if asking if there's a distinction is the right question. Maybe it's easier if I say said something like, can you recognize what is created by the absolute versus what is created by humans? Do you see a distinction at all, right? Um, or um, what has been um, uh, an experience you've had in this realm, R realm of the creator, the <laughs> absolute, the source, right? You know, we could pull out the G word. There's so many ways to say this, but you know, it's it's kind of a big question because then I'm I'm am I really asking you if creation is you know real? Did God create? Did the absolute create? <laughs> what the heck am I asking? <laughs> Tell us, Ashley. <laughs> well, um, um, a fantastic question. Um, very very deep. Um, at first I wanted to say that yes, there is, but actually when I really felt in my body, like when I really felt into the truth of the wholeness of how I understand myself today, I, I think there is no separation. I just think that's how we try to understand the world, even through words, <laughs> like even words can, can, se can separate. Um, but I would say that it is the everything because with creation, I do feel like there is an there's an impact and there's a ripple and therefore it is if you want to call it god if you want to call it i don't recall what the word was that you used the great the absolute <laughs> yeah the absolute um some people refer to it as the great mystery and mm -hmm. and for me even in that space there is 
um, the nothing and the everything um, of which all things exist. And therefore, to me, it is the same. And if the saying is true that we're a, hol holog a hologram or if we're like, you know, a God spark within us of something much larger than that proves that to be true. Um, yeah. So that's my answer. Love it. Jenny, do you want to bite on that one? Yeah, what feels true in my body right now is that we are the absolute. We're little fractals of that. And so it's it's the same yeah. in our own little unique branded sparkly, right? Yeah. Elves. Well, and, and Ashley, uh, you um, brought up dualism earlier and, and there's this phrase that everything is dualistic until it's not. Mm -hmm. I, that's that's how we tend to learn and understand things. I'm over here, this thing is over here and I'm observing it so I can understand it. And then eventually it like swallows you or you ingest it or something happens and you become it. And then it's not dualistic anymore. And I feel like that's what has happened with what ha with the, the absolute creation um, is that we feel separate from it. Like we're over here, creating things separately from the supreme from the source from the great mystery until we have these like moments right the the lightning bolt hits you in the head and you can't you can't even possibly distinguish yourself from this source um and then you're like well I'll be damned we're all just kind of doing this together at the same time aren't we <laughs> yeah <laughs> trying to harmonize it all synchronize it all anyways well, creativity, the creator and you, it's an amazing topic. We could um, have brought it to many, in many other directions, but it was fun to just have this small little chat. Um, thank you for working with us, bo uh, both of you working with me through the technical difficulties and anyone who's watching on Facebook Live. Uh, we will announce another chat soon, but in the meantime, uh, I hope that we've brought some some uh, areas of reflection to surface for you and that you can um, connect to the creator in you. So thank you, ladies. Thank you very much. Thank you all Thanks for showing up. We'll see you next time. Okay, bye. Bye. We are off live. Stop recording.